Chapter 21 of The Science of Being Great by Wallace D. Waddles A Mental Exercise The purpose of mental exercises must not be misunderstood. There is no virtue in charms or formulated strings of words. There is no shortcut to development by repeating prayers or incantations. A mental exercise is an exercise not in repeating words, but in the thinking of certain thoughts. The phrases that we repeatedly hear become convictions, as Goethe says, and the thoughts that we repeatedly think become habitual and make us what we are. The purpose in taking a mental exercise is that you may think certain thoughts repeatedly until you form a habit of thinking them. Then they will be your thoughts all the time. Taken in the right way and with an understanding of their purpose, mental exercises are of great value, but taken as most people take them, they are worse than useless. The thoughts embodied in the following exercise are the ones you want to think. You should take the exercise once or twice daily, but you should think the thoughts continuously. That is, do not think them twice a day for a stated time and then forget them until it is time to take the exercise again. The exercise is to impress you with the material for continuous thought. Take a time when you can have from 20 minutes to half an hour secure from interruption and proceed first to make yourself physically comfortable. Lie at ease in a Morris chair, or on a couch, or in a bed. It is best to lie flat on your back. If you have no other time, take the exercise on going to bed at night and before rising in the morning. First, let your attention travel over your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, relaxing every muscle as you go. Relax completely, and next, get physical and other ills off your mind. Let the attention pass down from the spinal cord and out over the nerves to the extremities, and as you do so, think. My nerves are in perfect order all over my body. They obey my will, and I have great nerve force. Next, bring your attention to the lungs and think. I am breathing deeply and quietly, and the air goes into every cell of my lungs, which are in perfect condition. My blood is purified and made clean. Next, to the heart. My heart is beating strongly and steadily, and my circulation is perfect, even to the extremities. Next, to the digestive system. My stomach and bowels perform their work perfectly. My food is digested and assimilated, and my body rebuilt and nourished. My liver, kidneys, and bladder each perform their several functions without pain or strain. I am perfectly well. My body is resting, my mind is quiet, and my soul is at peace. I have no anxiety about financial or other matters. God, who is within me, is also in the things I want, impelling them towards me. All that I want is already given to me. I have no anxiety about my health, for I am perfectly well. I have no worry or fear whatever. I rise above all temptation to moral evil. I cast out all greed, selfishness, and narrow personal ambition. I do not hold envy, malice, or enmity toward any living soul. I will follow no course of action which is not in accord with my highest ideals. I am right and I will do right. Viewpoint All is right with the world. It is perfect and advancing to completion. I will contemplate the facts of social, political, and industrial life only from this high viewpoint. Behold, it is all very good. I will see all human beings, all my acquaintances, friends, neighbors, and the members of my own household in the same way. They are all good. Nothing is wrong with the universe. Nothing can be wrong but my own personal attitude, and henceforth I keep that right. My whole trust is in God. Consecration I will obey my soul and be true to that within me which is the highest. I will search within for the pure idea of right in all things and when I find it, I will express it in my outward life. I will abandon everything I have outgrown for the best I can think. I will have the highest thoughts concerning all my relationships, and my manner and action shall express these thoughts. I surrender my body to be ruled by my mind. I yield my mind to the dominion of my soul, and I give my soul to the guidance of God. Identification There is but one substance and source, and of that I am made, and with it I am one. It is my Father, I proceed forth and came from it. My Father and I are one, and my Father is greater than I, and I do His will. I surrender myself to conscious unity with pure spirit. 
There is but one, and that one is everywhere. I am one with the eternal consciousness. Idealization. Form a mental picture of yourself as you want to be, and at the greatest height your imagination can picture. Dwell upon this for some little time, holding the thought, this is what I really am. It is a picture of my own soul. I am this now in soul, and I am becoming this in outward manifestation. Realization. I appropriate to myself the power to become what I want to be, and to do what I want to do. I exercise creative energy. All the power there is, is mine. I will arise and go forth with power and perfect confidence. I will do mighty works in the strength of the Lord, my God. I will trust and not fear, for God is with me. End of chapter 21